HDFC limited list hua tha. Kya market cap thi uski? I think we started with a paid up capital of 10 crores and the market cap when I joined in 1981 was a little under 8 crores. So, so 8 crores se kam HDFC limited ki market cap thi jab is floor pa wo trade karta tha. Kamat sahab, ICICI bank ki kya market cap thi? Jab ICICI bank ko limited alag alag thi. ICICI limited uh, jo hai, I think was listed uh, from 1955-56 and uh, never skipped a dividend uh, in its uh, history. Uh, I don't recall the exact market cap when uh, uh, we merged, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we merged, that is around 2002, uh, but it wasn't uh, a large number. It wasn't a large number. And today, what is the combined market cap? Any idea of all the subsidiaries and everything put together? It, says it would be over $100 billion. $100 billion. What about HDFC bank now, everything put together? About 180, 185 billion. So, 10 crore se 180 billion dollar ki chalang HDFC group ne lagai hai pichle 30 saalon mein aur ICICI bank ke bhi wohi chalang hai. Mere se log puch rahe te bhi aapke paas kya hai? HDFC ka loan hai, ICICI ka loan hai, to mene unko ye jawab diya. Ji, mere paas HDFC bank ka home loan hai, ICICI bank ka car loan hai, LIC ka insurance hai, or SBI can there be a saving account. Wow. <laughs> so that is what India is, and that is what we stand for. Samat, uh, well, we may argue back and say that look, things are looking great, but the grain of the truth here is that job creation is a problem. India's per capita income is still below three thousand dollars. If one really looks at the 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 new wave of capex, it is largely coming from the government sector, not the private sector. So, do you think those are genuine and visible challenges? If you look at, uh, I would say the the breakup of uh, growth that will happen. Uh, uh, I would say the space that needs to be uh, pushed is uh, infrastructure. So clearly, that is going to be, take a large part of uh, developmental effort and. That is what you have seen in other uh, countries also. Infrastructure is the first driver, and in India that will happen. And that's enormously job accretive, the in creation of infrastructure. Second uh, is manufacturing. Manufacturing keeps pace with demand. Manufacturing cannot happen in isolation. And the job uh, creation there also will happen in consonance with uh, the demand for a product and the capacity that you uh, create. And uh, the third part here, as we said, uh, was uh, digital which will uh, drive all these things. And we, of course, have the traditional uh, drivers of growth, agriculture and, uh, you know, what we traditionally have been uh, relying on as growth drivers, the services economy. So, to me, the job creation will happen in all these areas. And uh, the question of, uh, you know, GDP, uh, to me, is, uh, follows, in the sense, uh, per capita GDP follows overall growth in GDP. So you do have uh, overall growth in GDP, and then your per capita GDP uh, will uh, increase. So if you grow at 8%, 10%, you should then uh, you know, have a GDP growth, uh, you know, allowing for any uh, population growth that you have, you will have uh, uh, GDP growth, uh, per capita growth, keeping uh, in step with the overall GDP growth. So I think that uh, employment will happen if you keep your uh, eyes on your goal, and that is overall growth. And that will drive uh, the employment agenda. Uh, Mr. Mistri, in last 43 years, what has surprised you in terms of growth and what has disappointed you? I would say the last 10 years have been extraordinarily strong. Extraordinarily. Absolutely extraordinarily. Prior to that, we had a little bit of you know, ups and downs. The economy was doing very well for some time. Then there was a slowdown, again it picked up, so there were ups and downs. But since 2014, we have not seen any down cycle in the economy, notwithstanding the fact that this period of 10 years saw one and a half odd years of COVID. And despite the impact of COVID, our economy was unimpacted. We didn't have the kind of tear away inflation that the Western countries saw. Uh, RBI was extremely prompt, extremely proactive in terms of you know, intervening in the market, uh, increasing interest rates when necessary, and keeping liquidity under control, which has ensured that we've not had the uh, inflation that the Western countries have had. So I think, I would say, last 10 years have been very, very good. 
What can worry me a little bit is oil. If we were to have some very sharp rise in oil prices, oil goes back to $130, $140 for whatever reason, whether it's Middle East issues or whatever, then that would have some temporary impact on our economy because we are such a large importer of oil and oil has a big impact on GDP, inflation, current account deficit and all of that.